are you doing, Mr. Palmer? It's been a while. It has. How you been, man? Good, good. You know, can't complain. You know, loaded up on candy from Halloween or something. Probably just went and bought a whole bunch of candy that was on sale because that's what I do. Um, <clears throat> but I'm good. I'm good. It's it, another stray dog for us, which is a, it, a fun episode. It is. I'll be honest with you. There's sometimes when um, I bribe my my granddaughter who lives with me, and I'll be like. Like, you know, I'll just buy you a bag of candy if you don't make me go walk around the neighborhood. <laughs> See, that's that's a capitalistic idea. It's a great idea um, because you can get more for less, especially if you wait for like the day after Halloween when they go on sale. But I have to say, having just sat through our ethics and compliance training, bribery is bad, Jim. We don't do bribes. Well, not not in the business world, but I can bribe my <laughs> I can bribe my kids. I mean, look, if bribery, if, if bribing your kids wasn't a thing, I think the world would have ended millennia ago. Yeah, we probably would have stopped having kids. Uh, <laughs> so anyways. Let's see, off know, off the know. rails in less than 30 seconds. <laughs> I We take pride in that. Um, it's only when Tofu is on that we can't go off the rails that fast. Oh, that's true. Um, <laughs> and he'll maintain the record for... Ever. I, mean, I think even when Bart was on, we went off pretty fast. So we did, we did um, go he off joined the rails. Us. He joined yeah. us, so that's that works fine. So what's the topic today? I want to talk about something that's it's sort of interesting. And I I wrote a blog post when I first joined Ruckus it, it, when we published it like a like the week I joined Ruckus, and it was all about I didn't realize about Smart Zone and and how much it had changed from the zone director that I had seen. I'd seen seen a zone director in a class way back when I first started doing Wi-Fi and they're using a ruckus zone director. And I looked at it and for all the ruckus people, cover your ears. I looked at it and I said, what a cute little controller. It would never scale. I would never use ruckus if I needed something more than say, I don't know, 20 APs. Cause I was like, it's just not scalable. And then I, and then I saw um, my previous boss, Mo Williams running a smart zone at Black Hat. And I was standing over his shoulder and I was like, what is this? I was like, I've never seen anything like this before. It was just so intuitive. It was so smooth. You know, people were throwing questions at her and she's just jumping through this controller. And I was like, this controller is really well done. I was like, but I've never seen it. I didn't know anything about it. And that's what really intrigued me about it. And so one of the things I wanted to, you know, I've always really been interested in is knowing and understanding what Ruckus has that. I think some people that have been with Ruckus for a very long time take for granted, but like we were talking about earlier, uh, before we hit record about things that maybe most people don't know about, because as a Ruckus person, you kind of take it for granted. But in reality, there's actually some pretty cool features that like I was talking to an SE last year and I was like, oh yeah, I was like, I like doing X with it, with a Ruckus AP. And the guy looked at me and he goes, I didn't know you could do that. And I was like, Wow. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned your your exposure to Ruckus, and I, I come at it from a little bit of a different angle. You had the benefit of, of knowing Mo and and getting exposed to it a little bit beforehand, whereas I, I mean, I knew about Ruckus, but I didn't touch a Ruckus AP or a controller until, I can't even say it was the day I started. It took me a little while to get my lab up and running. But, you know, a lot of the things, now, I might have touched them in, con in, in, in a conceptual form or very high level at a past job, because some of these aren't necessarily ruckus specific it's just that we do it in a different way or we do it better or we build our ecosystem to rely on it more as a primary function if you will but some of these things are not you know they're not only ever going to happen in ruckus but so in that respect like I, I got to play with them when i was setting up my controller and i'm like this is awesome like this is yeah. like, this is like why, why doesn't everybody do this like that was my you know sort of my aha moment and, and you know it's like it's a family friendly show and i almost i was so excited i almost dropped some really uh, bad superlatives, right. but you know, right? We've got a list. You put it put to put together a list that we were kind of throwing some ideas out there, and we can run through them. Um, and if you're listening to it and you want us to dive into any one of these particular topics, please by all means, we do have a, an email. You'll catch that at the end of the show. It's in the show notes as well. Please reach out, Jim, and I get that. Um, right now, all we get is spam to it, so uh, we'd love to hear from you. But let us know and say, I'd really like to hear more about this feature or that feature, because uh, believe me, we would have no problems going in in depth on in, in any of these for a whole show or more. So um, yeah, but let's get into the list right off the top of the bat, using the second Ethernet port on an AP as an access port for other devices. This is the one that I was talking to an SE about, and he had no idea we could do this. And yet, when I was at Black Hat, Mo was doing this like all the time, and it's and it's it's an awesome awesome, awesome use case, which I can't believe I never thought of until 
I saw it happen. You know, well, I mean, and in fairness, there are some APs that we have. I'm thinking specifically of the H series, where that's a marketed feature. Right. They, they have a switch built into those APs, but we're not talking about the H series at this point. You're talking about our series that, that you were using in, in Vegas. Yeah. With an extra, which is like mind blown, right? Well, so let me give you the scenario. You are working in, you, know, you need to provide Wi Fi coverage for a presentation room where they're doing, they're presenting topics and, and at some conferences, unlike the one that we normally attend, um, the attendees actually change rooms and it's like, Hey, we're going to have this presenter in at, in this room at this time doing his topic. And at the same time, there's like five other rooms doing it. And when, when they started putting things online, they said, Hey, we need to record these things or we need to have this stuff. And so they started putting audio visual teams in the rooms and the audio visual teams were like, Hey, we need a wired access. And instead of giving them, you know, another wall Jack, what Mo was doing is Mo was turning up this second port on the access points as an access port and saying, Hey, put the AP near the audio visual guys who are normally at the back of the room. So it was great. You'd have an AP at the front of the room. You have an AP at the back of the room. And she'd put the AP near there. And then she'd just run a jumper cable out of the AP and they would plug in an unmanaged switch and it, they would plug in, you know, four or five different things into their unmanaged switch. And then the AP would tag it with the, the VLAN specific for the audio visual guys. And it was totally different than the, the VLAN for the support team, for the guest attendees. It was its own separate VLAN and it saved having to have additional wall jacks and switch ports because we could all do it from the AP. And that is, I think, one of the coolest features because most people look at a second port on the AP as like a redundant or a lag port or something. No, she was using it as a managed switch port. And she you could use totally different VLANs. You can use it as a you know, multiple VLANs tagged, untagged, fantastic feature. And I don't think enough people know about it and talk about it. No, I would agree. And I had that different use case. But, you know, looking at the T750, I had a, a POC where we were just trying to, you know, sell all the different points of it. And we're like, well, you know, if you don't, if you've got the ability to support the power draw, because turning on that extra port, if you're driving an AP with it, is going to draw more power, obviously. But you've got the ability to use one run to drive two APs for an outdoor execution. It's, it's a neat feature. And then something, something just came up with this last week, actually, or last month. It's, I don't know. It wasn't today um, where somebody was asking about doing SFP ports on APs. And somebody was like, why would you ever do that? And it's like, well, if you use powered fiber, you now have power running with your fiber, DC power running to a, or even AC, you can run the power to, you know, external to the um, ethernet connection to the device. So if you have power being supplied from the remote end and you're put you're running fiber because of distance and you need to put an ap in like a camera you can run the camera power off of that powered fiber and then you plug the ethernet just a little jumper into your second port and now all of a sudden you have one run supporting multiple devices doing multiple things just the way you'd want to do it and so it's a it's an awesome feature and again i don't think we talk them we don't talk enough about it right and it's definitely something we shouldn't and we don't want to get too bogged down on this one yeah um i think that the the one probably the one reason it doesn't get talked about a lot is it, it's not necessarily it could be a corner case um, and I can certainly understand that I mean I wouldn't necessarily design a permanent deployment where you're using this on a regular basis but it's it's nice because think about it right going back to Vegas Black Hat whatever event any event special temporary whatever you could pay the facility to do a run and it's probably going to cost a few hundred dollars oh well. Or more. <laughs> and not, we're not going to get into pricing. We don't want to. And I know it's 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 probably four zeros, uh, or or at least three, um, before the decimal point. But if you do one run and you've got the ability to to use one run, hook up the AP and get two out of it or more. Yes, it's it's a force multiplier and it saves you money and it provides infinite flexibility. And, and if you plan it like that, that's great. But the other part of it is if you're in a pinch and you go son of a gun, we we miscounted. We need to add it add something and we didn't plan for it. And there's no time. Forget about the cost. There's no time to get another run. But you've got a couple hundred feet of cat five. This is a problem that we can fix. Yes. You know, and, and so that's pretty cool. And I definitely think it deserves like I said, we could go on a on a tangent for thirty minutes just on that. Moving on, uh, let's see. We've got virtual smart zone data plane appliances, sure, but everything virtualized and on prem. I don't think Ruckus gets enough credit for this one because it's it's something that a lot of the vendors are now going to. But you know, Ruckus has had a virtualized smart zone, you know, the controller, and a virtualized data plane for a long time. You know, and and at first I didn't really understand because I was, I've always been an appliance guy. I think that's just 
you know, coming from previous life, previous job, yeah, you know, you always had an appliance. You didn't, you know, cloud that subscription thing wasn't really ready yet, you know, way back in the day. Sorry, all you Arrowhive fans. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but the idea that saying, hey, instead of having an actual physical appliance that takes two RU in a rack and you got to give redundant power to it and you got to do all these other things, you know, it's like, why not just virtualize it, you know, and take out that power draw? And I think it's something that ruckus has had for a long time. And I don't think people really realize what that means when you say, hey, we can virtualize everything from the controller perspective, whether it's a smart zone, a data plane, IoT stuff, it, virtualize it. I mean, we have these, we're building these very efficient virtualized environments, especially in larger organizations, or you're like me and you, and we have a nook that's running, <laughs> running a virtual environment in our house. And all of a sudden you start spinning all these things up in a box that fits in the palm of your hand and you get all these features, but I don't have to have a 19 inch rack in my lab to do this anymore. Yeah. It's really nice. I mean, obviously there's only so much you can do with a nook, but you can do a lot with a nook, you know, for case in point, my, I run my, my home and my lab off of one, and that's going to be the segue to the, the third one. But I also use it for uh, when I travel and, and teach the RCWA, which has only happened once, maybe it'll happen again, who knows. But I used my Nook, a separate Nook, to travel with and stand up APs, and I could show and run different APs on that same Nook on one controller, but different code. And there's the segue. See, I was I was building up to it twice. And the, the reality is, and this is a pretty cool feature, for anybody that's done it any other way, it's an all or nothing proposition. You have to upgrade a site, you're doing every AP. Every AP has got to be on the same code. But, if it's on, if it's on that controller, but we don't have to do that. Now, this is one of those things that, you know, I didn't really even think was possible in, a, in my previous existence, because in my previous life, I was all physical appliances, you know, I had a, had either a two RU or a one RU or even a, you know, one RU half width controller. But I was running three different versions of firmware based on the different applications. I, you know, we had very specialized areas and it would be like, okay, for this particular solution, we have to have this AP running this firmware because it gives us the feature that we want. And so I had to buy appliances. And then when we made it work, we went, okay, now we're going to make it permanent. You then had to buy a second one to make it redundant. And so at one point in time, I had six different controllers, I actually ended up with eight. But uh, <laughs> that's a story for a different day. But I had I had one pair of controllers running one firmware version, and that was actually it was a small you know sort of a, a test bed, and so I had a different set of controllers for that. I had a set of controllers running an older version of firmware to support a very specific application, and then I had my primary sets of controllers. And so I was licensing and I was doing all these things as I'd move the APs between physical controllers in order to get the different firmware that I needed based on what the application was going to be. And I just figured that's just the way life is. That's how life goes. And so that's why you need to have different models of controllers, because there's sometimes when you're, you know, I need to support a hundred APs on one firmware. So I'd get a mid-level controller. I need to support a thousand or a couple thousand APs on one level. So you get a different one. And it was just, I just figured that's the way it was. And then one day I realized, hey, you know, on Smart Zone, I can have different zones because uh, it's a smart zone. Yeah, and, and, the, <laughs> and the, where this comes in handy, and I've seen this not necessarily firsthand, but I've I've seen this from other SEs with their customers, where you'll have an older AP, let's say mm -hmm. an R three hundred, three hundred and ten, something like that, and it can only run up to say five two two code. And I don't know, I'm not looking at the the chart, so I could be completely wrong. But you've got an older AP that maxes out at a certain code level. Mm -hmm. But in the same organization, you just bought a bunch of R seven seventies, and they require newer code. Well, forget the R seven seventy yet, because that's not the code's not out for that yet. Let's go with the R seven sixty. That requires six one one code. Yes. Well, you've got two different APs that need two different levels of code that cannot. One can't run on the other. You know, 522 doesn't know the six, that the Wi-Fi 6E exists and 611, but you can have the controller on 611 overall, and you can mm -hmm. have a zone running 611 so that your R760s are fat, drunk, and happy, and you still oh. leave a legacy zone running the required code. Now, there was, I think there was a gap at some point, maybe a year or two back where the, the I don't know, I'm going to have to edit this probably, but I think there was a, at some point we had a dead spot where I think it was like three, five code wasn't supported, but I think a lot of that's been rectified yet. We go back. I mean, at the end of the day, there's a chart out there on our support site where 
it shows the software support for the controllers and the APs, and it's extensive. I mean, you get like eight to 10 years out of an AP, if not more. So the prime example that I use all the time is, you know, I have some, I have 11 AX APs in my house and I got a call or actually I got a message one day from a friend of ours, Lariana Louie, and she was having problems with a 70, a zone flex 7982, which is an 802.11 NAP. Now I just happen to have a couple of those. I use one as a demo in my class. But I had some and, and she was like, I'm having problems with it. I don't understand. And so I was like, I was like, well, hold on a second. And I had accidentally built my controller to where I could run the 3.6 code that the, the 11 NAPs topped out at. And it, it was a happy accident. I can't take all the credit for it. But I was like, I was like, wow, I can actually spin up a zone and I can spin it up at this old 3.6 code. And I could support 11 NAP. So at one point in time, I had 11 N, I had 11 AC, I had 11 AC wave two, and I had 11 AX code all running on my one little nook, running my virtual smart zone. And I could, I was able to support my house, you know, that the, my family uses, which is very important. I was able to support my lab, which is running, you know, the latest, greatest. So I could, I could work on new stuff that's coming out. But at the same time, I could also go back and help Lariana with her, you know, 3.6 code problems. And then we could, and we figured it all out. And it was like, but having that flexibility to bounce around and I didn't have to, I didn't have to get new because, because I was using, basically, I'd be like, oh, pull this AP off, put an AP on. I didn't need extra licenses. I didn't need all this extra support. I was still supporting. I, you know, It's so simple, so easy. And it makes my life so much easier that, and again, I when I found this out, I was like, did you know we could do that? And they went, well, yeah, everybody can do it. And I'm like, no, they can't. At least not yet. No, They're getting no. there. But Ruckus has been doing this for a long time. Yeah, and the, the nice thing about this, and so most, I, th I believe this is covered in the release notes, probably, uh, for each of the versions of software. Jim's going to keep me honest, but there's definitely documentation on the support site that says, yeah. like, with the new code, this is these are the APs that we support, these are the zones we support. So it's not infinite, um, obviously, but it's, I mean, it is extensive. When I say you can get eight to ten years of life out of an AP with a smart zone, it's not a reach. I mean, I, we literally have customers running that kind of a gap on on sites because it's just what they can do and, and not they're even sites i should say s uh, controllers because the controller can run multiple sites yeah and they're building this into ruckus one so as ruckus one as as it evolves i mean it's not going all the way back to um the 11 nap so sorry everybody but it's not everything as, is backwards compatible no, hey, look at some point in time you got to put draw the line in the sand but um, Ruckus One is actually has the same feature as well, where you'll be able to basically say, "Hey, I have one site, or you know, or even you know, I, I'm going to run two different. You know, you have to break it down by venues and sites, but you can be you make you can actually have two sites. Not you'd ever want to do it, but um, you really want to keep one generation in one RF environment. But um, you'll be able to have one site that'll be running one version, and you can upgrade a second site and get them on newer code, but all running on Ruckus One. So yeah, and and, and speaking of Ruckus One, I mean it's it's another good segue. You can run a lot of different things on a lot of different platforms. We have you know you, you don't have to buy one for one. I can buy an AP now, and I can do standalone. I can do Unleashed. I could do. Ruckus One, I could do the controller. Unleashed is one of those I haven't touched. I know you've touched a lot more. I shouldn't say I haven't touched it. I've touched it a little bit and have been really impressed with it. Um, <clears throat> it's impressively powerful for what you get. So standalone code. What do you think, Jim? You know, it's funny because every time we get a new AP, I always see these on, on the social medias where they're like, I got to go do an AP on a stick with this brand new AP. How do I, how do I configure that AP? What, what firmware version do I need to put on this AP to make it an AP on a stick? And for those who don't know, an AP on a stick is just simply an AP powered by usually a battery, um, an external battery pack. And you you program it to broadcast an SSID on a specific channel with specific parameters. You know, I mean, transmit power and uh, channel bandwidth and then channel, mainly your three main things you want to configure on this AP. And you put it on a tripod and you set it and then you survey around it, freeze your data, move the AP to a different area, survey again, and you can figure out, hey, and it's called an AP on a stick. But I always see, I always see questions. Hey, who wrote a blog post on how I can do that? And it's funny because I wrote one for Ruckus. And it was basically take the AP out of the box, fire it up, 
read the information off the back and then get into the firmware that's that comes native on the AP and program your stuff because it's a GUI. It's not a great GUI, but for an AP on a stick, you don't need a great GUI and you just go, hey, I want my five gig radio program with this SSID on this channel at this bandwidth at this transmit power save done. It's all built in. There's no blog. There's no flashing a specific firmware to make it work. It's all just built in. So as much as I like Unleashed and quite frankly, for what I, Unleashed can do, we give it away for free. And I'm like, wow. But the standalone code for a Wi-Fi professional I think is wholly underutilized and underappreciated. I wouldn't say it's like completely painless, but it's pretty impressive how relatively painless you can get from one version to the other. And I know, I think I did it last year when I was prepping to teach the RCWA, and I think you've done it a few times for, and not even for fun, but I think you had a couple of reasons to be testing one versus the other. And, and to be able to switch to all of them in short order is pretty cool. Not that you can't do it with other stuff, but I mean, I know from, from where I've been, making it go from one version to another was was a bit painful compared to, to how it was to get it from, you know, I went from like just attached to a controller to uh, attached to Unleashed or uh, standalone to Unleashed or things like that. So yeah, it's, it's I definitely would say it's an unsung feature. The, the secret, the secret to moving Ruckus APs around, and one of these days I'm going to get around to do, I was, I was going to live stream, like how long it takes me to go from all the different versions and take a single AP and move it around and around. The secret to the Ruckus AP is the standalone code version. That's the base code version that comes from the factory with the AP. You, know, you buy an AP, it comes with a base standalone version. And it usually starts with a 100 number, like 104, 112, 114. I'm not quite sure what the newer ones are shipping with, but it's it's that 100 number. Unleashed is 200. Smart Zone was three, five, six, and now seven. And we're catching up to the Zone Director stuff because that was kind of the same, but that's that's going away. So that tells you kind of what code version you have. But if you start with a 100 code version on the AP and you just think about the fact that that's what you have to go back to, if you switch, and the, and the hardest thing about doing these, these um, switching between all the different firmwares is getting your AP isolated. So it's not talking to somebody else. Once you can isolate the AP and get it powered up, like maybe using a battery pack, like a survey battery, then all you do is you should go, you basically do a factory reset on the AP. You go into it and there'll be a, a point where you can say, do a firmware upgrade. And all you do is just do a local firmware upgrade. And then you just click, you browse to your download folder, click the version you want to put on that AP, click a, upload. It does it all for you. There's no TFTP servers involved but you can, there's, you know, that's how simple it is. But the, the power of the standalone firmware version, I read on, on different social media posts where people have been running their ruckus APs in standalone as, and you running their house on that. And people were like, why aren't you using unleashed? And they're like, oh, well, I don't want to pay for it. And they're like, yeah, you don't have to pay for it. But people run their houses on standalone code is how powerful that thing is. Not that you recommend it, but yeah, I, mean, I think I'm it's a, one of those. I'm a, I'm a sucker for my controllers, but I mean, you can. I was talking to a guy, a friend of mine down in Mexico, and he was working with his buddy and he's running a hotel on Ruckus Unleashed. And it has all these guest features to include a guest portal where guests can, can actually log in and create their own accounts that then ties back into the reservation system so, so that they can, they can build their own custom uh, passwords and passphrases for their devices while they're there at the hotel. And when they check out, it's deleted. And that's an unleashed. It takes work, but you know, it's that's always the case. If you're gonna, if you're gonna not pay for the really cool stuff, you know, pay if you're not gonna pay for it, then you're gonna pay for, you know, money-wise, you're gonna pay for it in time as you as you work through it. But the feature's there, which I find very fascinating. No, agreed. And, and I mean we could and we have more topics, but we're we're kind of running short on time, but we will probably wind up having to do it. <laughs> Uh, uh, part two and probably more because I think, I mean, there's so many other things that I mean, I love about it that I could just, uh, you know, local breakout right out of the box saved me more times than I care to admit, including with a uh, customer's production network. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that we do. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all RF, but there's a lot of things we do a little bit differently that it's, it's worth pointing a spotlight on. So, and it, you know, the other thing I find so fascinating and interesting is the fact that we've gone through almost 30 minutes now and we've we've touched on four things and yet 
we still have like four more things to go. And that was just, that was just sort of us sort of brainstorming, you know, going, Hey, what are some things? And there's probably, if you were, if we were to put this out to the SE community, the ruckus SE community, I bet you we could probably get 10 more things additional to what we have on our list about things that, you know, ruckus does that I think sometimes ruckus people forget, you know, we just go, well, of course everybody does it that way. And you're, and if you don't know, you're sitting there screaming, going, no, not everybody does that. And that was one of the things I think you you and I both coming from a non-ruckus background, we we had that perspective that, you know, some of these people we've talked to have been doing it for so long in ruckus. They're like, what do you mean nobody else does it like this? This is so like logical. Um, maybe to you, not to everybody. And the other thing, too, is it's different perspective. So not even people in and outside of ruckus for, for years and years and years, but I work in service provider. So I have a very specific kind of realm that I operate in. I don't necessarily touch a lot of the other APs or tips and tools and tricks that we can use or very sparingly, but what mm -hmm. I do use, others don't and vice versa. And and so it's really cool. And that might actually be a good use of a survey to the SE community because I'm, like you said, I'm sure we came up with on our own a list of 10 or 15. I'm I'm willing to bet that we could probably come up with another 10 or 20 that we don't even have people are, are thinking of. So stay tuned. We've got more stray dogs. Yeah. All right. I don't know. I'm, Mr. Palmer, I don't think I have anything else today. I always have more stuff. But in the interest <laughs> of this. Forever, but we do have to. Yeah. <laughs> in the interest of the sanity of our listeners, like yeah, we, John was we saying. Have, we have sane listeners. I'm going to pretend we have at least one. So if you're right. that one person who's sane um, that's listening to us, um, I'm going to. Yay. <laughs> We're, we're going to cut this off, but yeah, if you, if there's anything that you, you're like, you're like, you know, this, if the, we don't have, even have to go to the SC community, we can do a listener poll. You know, if, if there's a feature about ruckus that you use that you wish more people talked about, send us an email, that email. And I'll even say it here before John says it, ruckcast at comscope.com. Send us an email. Let us know what features you like using. And um, we'll include it into our next our round two of uh, top unknown ruckus features. But yeah, so I'm good for, for today. I think we've we've covered this topic. And so we should let people go about their lives, enjoying the holiday season. And, and we'll pick it up on the next time. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jim. And uh, we'll catch everybody on the next episode. Thanks, everybody. If you want to contact the show directly, you can email us using the address ruckcast at comscope.com. To learn more about Ruckus products and services that we may have talked about on this or any other podcast, please check the links in the About section of the show. <laughs> <laughs>